Happy Holidays everyone! Yes, it's that time of year again to sit down, watch some mediocre Christmas specials, and review for your own childhood nostalgia covered up how bad they were. And... that's pretty much all I do for Christmas. With that being said, welcome to my first ever review on this channel! Besides the ones I refuse to acknowledge. Today, we will be looking at a show called Martin Mystery. Now, in case you weren't a 90s kid in Canada, you probably never heard of this show. It was a show which had a premise of a high school kid named Martin Mystery, his sister Diana Lombard, which I am now only realizing while making this video that Diana prefers to use her mother's maiden's name. I don't know why. Maybe it's a mystery. And typically, but not always, a caveman named Java teaming up together to save the world from paranormal and supernatural anomalies. Now, as a kid, I loved this series from beginning to end. It had a slightly creepy vibe without actually being scary. Every episode to me felt like a B-list monster movie. Now, with that being said, if you actually watch the show, you quickly catch on to the fact that a lot of the episodes follow the same generic formula over and over. And I'll explain more once we begin. So let's start the review. Now, most episodes open up to some idiot all alone, wanting something or doing something evil while fondling an ancient artifact of unholy evil, and in today's episode is no different. We have Clifford holding the why did your aunt give you this and why did she hate you snow globe. By the way, this show's announcer is awesome. Then we have the opening to the show, which is still pretty cool from what I last saw. Next, we cut to Torrington Academy on Christmas Eve. I know that because the show told me. Where we have Diana and Martin talking about their Christmas plans, or more importantly, Diana's schedule. Not according to my schedule. 3 o'clock, find Martin and get a ride home. 4 o'clock, change the flannel jammies and make holiday shortbread cookies. 5 o'clock, commence watching sappy tear jerking Christmas slips on TV. <laughs> wow, that sounds like fun. I especially like the part where you plan every waking second. And for the rest of the episode, their exchange of dialogue is just bickering for no good reason. Martin gets a call from the center on his U-Watch. Uh, U-Watch, by the way, is a watch that holds a bunch of gadgets and devices for Martin to use on his missions. And the center is basically an agency that sends other agents around the world to maintain stuff the paranormal. Sort of like the Men in Black. We move to the next checklist of things to do when writing a Martin mystery episode, finding doors and portals to the center in the wide open. I always ask myself how they get so lucky that no one catches them slipping through a portal or what if by mistake someone happens to find a bunker door in the middle of a school courtyard. Like, really? Whatever, moving along, we transition to the next checks box as we see our main characters scan and have Billy come in to offer our protagonist a treat. <laughs> Piss. This is Billy. He's Martin's best friend and one of the center's most valuable employee. His role in the series is basically to give detailed analysis of samples that he gets and to provide backup for Martin. Next, we meet Java. Nice work, job. Especially the lid. Only I'm not exactly catching the Christmas vibe. Billy explains how he and Java are going ice fishing in some shack they rented. After that, they go up to see Mom. No, not that Mom. What are you, stupid? This mom. Mom stands for Mystery Organization Manager and is in charge of the center, making her the boss of Martin. By the way, the next scene will be the happiest you'll ever see of mom. Oh my gosh, mom's gone anime! <laughs> well, mom gives some presents to our duo. Martin gets a laser light ring. I really wanted to get you something you'd like. Pretty bad gift, mom. And Diana gets. It's a paperweight! Just any paperweight. It's one of a kind. Made from a piece of the twister I brought back from my Tennessee vacation. 
wow. Okay, well, Mom, despite telling them before how she wouldn't send them out on a mission, tells them they have to go on a mission to find some lost motorists in Quebec. Not so fast. Several motorists have disappeared from the same stretch of mountain road in Upper Laurentians, Quebec. Which seems weird because nothing about this mission indicates anything paranormal is happening. So, shouldn't you instead send a local search party? I mean, it seems weird to send trained paranormal investigators with high-tech alien equipment. Okay, you know what? Forget it. Mom does what she wants. Moving on. Martin and Diana are in a car, and Martin gets a hat from somewhere. I don't even know. Then they start bickering again. Yay! I can't take another second of you and your date timer and drudgery. Well, I can't take another second of your ridiculous flashing hat and your stupid scenic routes. Man, it would be pretty unfortunate if they somehow nearly escape crashing in a tree, investigate some time rocks, hold again, go to some mysterious light, and then wake up in some Christmas town. That'd just be unfortunate. Where'd that come from? Anyways, they meet Clifford in town. Oh, sorry. My name is Clifford. Are you lost? He tells them that the motorists aren't here and to leave town. This, of course, is caught by Diana as she cleverly makes the deduction that they aren't wanted? How strange. We also get to see more of Diana's clever deductions as they stick around town. Whoa, if that's not bizarro, I don't know what is. You mean their outdated fashion sense? No, I mean the way they just keep going around the pond the exact same way every single time. They're even more boring than you are. Hello, it's a small town. People get stuck in their routines, Martin. Well, I mean, that's possible. Nothing inherently paranormal is happening with that. Okay, but have you also noticed there aren't any cars around? So, maybe they're like the Amish. You know, not into the whole technology thing. But motorists drive up to these mountains. Wouldn't the Amish not allow that? Also, Amish people don't have skates. And most importantly, they're Christmas lights, so obviously, they have electricity. Oh, and there are tire marks behind them. Good job, Diana. The center is paying you well. Next checkbox, Martin uses his U-Watch to take out his slime scanner so he can scan the tire marks. Doing this, he finds out the snow is made of plastic, something they should have realized when they were huddling behind him. This angers Clifford as he sends skaters that turn into monsters to go after them. Only to have trees entangle our heroes. Oh, my head. They wake up tied up on a conveyor belt, wondering what happened. Let's see what patch of overly friendly Christmas trees. After that, I'm a little foggy. And if I had to guess, I'd say Clifford tied us up. Man, you are the smart one. Anyways, as Martin and Diana slowly approach their fruitcake death, we see our two motorists stuffed in muffins approaching a fire. And for some reason, Diana starts blaming Martin. Martin mystery, this is all your fault! Luckily, they have their handy dandy you watch. You know, you could've just jumped off the conveyor belt instead of swinging across, but whatever. Martin and Diana share a moment? Question mark? Then they realize, oh my god, two people are about to die. Or not. I guess the conveyor belt malfunctioned in time. Huh. Uh, hey look, a snow globe. Only, it's empty. Martin spots a broken snow globe, then makes the random deduction that they must be in a snow globe world. Okay. To prove his theory, he decides to take out the legend decks. Christmas, and now we're trapped here. 
that only give us about five hours to break the spell, or we'll be stuck here forever. Uh uh. There's no way I'm gonna let that happen. I need to get out of this nightmare, away from you, and back on my holiday schedule if it's the last thing I ever do. The lights cut out, and we cut to Java and Billy conveniently ice fishing nearby. They get a distress call from Martin and Diana and proceed to travel to them by snowmobile. Which seems weird because throughout the show, they show Billy being able to open portals to anywhere. And now that Martin is in danger, they take a snowmobile? Ugh, okay, whatever. We cut back to our gang as we see Clifford is having that perfect Christmas he was talking about as everything around him turns into monsters. Even the reindeer. And just as you think, Martin and Diana are done for, look who comes to rescue them. Oh, am I ever glad to see you two? They tell Billy and Java they were stuck in a snow globe world and they only have one hour left to... Wait a minute. Last time they said five hours! That only gives us about... So what the puck were they doing for four hours? Sitting in the factory in the dark? <sighs> Regardless, Billy tells them they should try and return everything back into the snow globe. But first they need to deal with the monsters. They manage to protect themselves from monster carolers singing at such a high frequency it could easily damage your eardrums by wearing hats. Okay. Next, to deal with the snowman's ice barf, Java just punches the ice. Man, these monsters are starting to suck. Next is the reindeers. No time. Martin decides to use his gift she got from mom to disable the flying reindeers. Weird since he has an ice cutter which can do the exact same thing but better. However, this gives Diana the idea to throw a tornado. Luckily, the tornado sucks everything back into the snow globe and everything returns back to normal. And surprise hug. Whoa, well, what was that for? Guess I was just in the mood for a spontaneous holiday party. Hey, I kinda like this. Maybe we should schedule these more often. It's Christmas morning, and the center is there to clean up everything, making sure nothing is left behind. Java and Billy are excited to get back to the ice fishing, and Mom pulls up to offer Diana and Martin a ride. This next scene is the most confusing and the most flippant I ever saw of Diana. Weird scene aside, Martin and Diana wish Mom a uh, Merry Christmas, and we get the ending shot of Clifford, still snuck in the snow globe. And that was Martin Mystery Eternal Christmas. All in all, it was a good episode. It's classic Martin Mystery and Christmas, the concept was cool, and seeing everything turn into monsters was awesome. But the plot holes are noticeable, and I would have liked a few more jokes, especially since Martin Mystery episodes are never especially creepy or scary. And while not completely annoying, Martin and Diana bickering throughout the whole episode could have been replaced with some actual family bonding. So at least the ending could have more heart. Instead, we get this weird shot of Clifford just waving in a snow globe. And God only knows how he's going to survive in there. But I think this episode is worth watching. For at least Christmas. And that concludes my first ever review. I just want to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays everyone, and see you next time. Hey guys, I just want to say one more thing at the end here. So I'm um, hopefully this thing gets edited and uploaded before Christmas. At least that's my intent. It should be. 
um, but quickly let you know that um, this is a new kind of series I'm trying to set up, so I do like reviews every so often, and if you guys have a suggestion for something I should like check out, or you guys want me to check out, just leave it in the comments below and I'll do it. Um, and tell me what I did good, what I did bad in this review, so I can like improve in the future. And that's all I just wanted to say. Anyways, yeah. See you later.